do you see any difference when when the CEO uh, is a woman or maybe has more feminine qualities? You said, you know, women for thousands of years have been clothed into the inside the the husband ideas. In in the last 50 years, with the doors have been opened, thanks to God. And then the women can develop some qualities they have developed during the thousands of years of being clothed. For example, patience, for example, uh, courage, for example, uh, looking into the soul of the people. And these are qualities which are very important that generally men did not develop because they were using their force mainly to impose everything to the to the to the people of, of the of the family and of the company. Of course, women, there are all there, still there is a prejudice against women. And slowly, slowly we have to help the men to accept the idea that women and men are are, are like the wings of a, of, a, of a dove, of a bird. A bird cannot fly with one wing alone, but the two wings should go together until the end of the of the project but the vision is is to give the possibility not only to men and women to go together but to white and, and black to muslim and christian you see there are many many differences in the planet and we have to acquire the concept of, of and the idea of unity in diversity because unity in diversity is the acceptance that we are unique in the world that there is no one who is equal to us and this is the main subject, and this is an important item. When, when a company, I, I can give you a lot of examples, companies of, uh, the small companies with 5 million, 10 million euros uh, um, uh, per year, you know, when you enter into the company and in, in a couple of years, the people is educated to think in a different way, the companies fly. The companies fly because... Uh, they use the qualities of the five levels of all the people into the into the company. For example, there is an important item that we do in these days, especially especially in North Italy. Denise Kumela, she knows what I'm saying. We call it Innovation Day. One day I go in the company and I and I meet all the people together, asking them three questions that never happened in the past. First. Asking to all the levels of the company, workers, uh, um, uh, uh, managers, commercial managers, women, men, black, white, all together in a circle. Mr. Robiat is there and he says that I want you to contribute to the company with three questions. You have to answer these three questions. First, how do you see the company in the next three years? Second, how do you see yourself in the company in the next three years? What kind of courses you should like to do what kind of vision you have, what kind of goal you want to implement it yourself. And the third one, which are your suggestions to create a better climate inside the company? You know, the discussion is fantastic because those working in the trench, those who are in front of the, of the, in the, business, in the business activity, you know how many, how many um, uh, suggestions, how many fantastic ideas. Just to make you an example, I was in Venice, there is a big company selling flowers. 10 million euros of flowers. Can you imagine? They have a showroom of 10,000 square meters with some beautiful, beautiful uh, vases uh, uh, during San Valentino feast, Christmas time, Easter time. You know, the, 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 the showroom is fantastic. So I had the meeting with this innovation day. There are 50 people and at the end, one of the girls, she was a young girl. She said, Mr. Robiati, I have an idea, but you know, I don't know if my idea is okay or is a stupid idea. I said, there, is not, there are not stupid ideas. Tell me your ideas. And it was fantastic. You know, she said, you know, Saturday and Sunday in the showroom, there are hundreds of families with children. The owner do not know how many damages the, ch the children of the families are doing running here and there. Why don't we take 100 square meters outside in the fields where we have 30 hectares of field, 100 square meters, we put a chicken, we put someone who is taking care of the children, and when they come into the showroom, they put the children into the special place for the little guests. 
And I said, this is a fantastic idea. Next weekend, we will apply the idea. You know what happened? In the next weekend, they double the income and without damages. Due to the fact that the idea of this little girl was fantastic. And all the families were happy and the children were very happy. So this is how to manage the, 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 the companies with new ideas because the, the planet is moving towards the future in a different way. Maybe some of you are shocked about my experiments and ideas, but this is my experience. With regards to if there's resistance from the CEO level uh, to committing to women inclusion and the C-suite level roles, what would your actionable steps be to these CEOs? How do you foster or initiate a strategic plan where they're slowly being open, becoming open-minded to that kind of, if they're resistant, for instance. The first idea is let him to talk with me on a Zoom. <laughs> the problem is a pro <laughs> is a problem of education. You know, generally, the, the manager of a certain age are more difficult. Let us say, when they are 45, 50 uh, uh, years old, is becoming more difficult than, than the younger because they came out of the university with the idea that the company is existing only to produce profit. And this is a wrong idea in the, in the, in the modern economy. Companies are, are, are there to create life around themselves. And the, the, the CEO should be, let us say, educated in this way. With the young generation, it's much, much, much easier because uh, it, there are a lot of consultants who make courses inside the company. For example, I have a lot of companies where the CEO at the beginning, especially in Italy, where the CEO are the owner of the company. So the owner of the company, the CEO is more difficult. But you know, when you talk with them, telling them that this instrument will create uh, much uh, growth of the company, and uh, and uh, you will not lose people as you are losing today because one of the problems today is how to keep the people in a company. The people fly away; they go because the climate is is uh, is not a good climate. So when you try with experience to tell the CEO what is the way, it takes time, but it, at the end you 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 arrive at this point. One of the uh, uh, problems I have seen is that I, I am being very lucky because, you know, I have a certain experience for so many years. So I know how, which is the button I have to touch. And of course, this is part of my, of my, uh, of my, of my career, how to find the, um, the problems of the company. You know, company has uh, problems. And uh, at the beginning, when you enter and you understand what the company is doing, you immediately understand which are the points which are not working. The, always the first one is the CEO. The CEO is the first one. So we have to uh, convince him that the world is changing and he has to enter in, into a, let us say, a, a program of, let us say, rehabilitation <laughs> or re-education. That's a That's a... For example, okay. EBBF, yeah. EBBF offers mainly courses on this subject. There are publications, there are uh, annual conferences, uh, regional conferences, where you meet people of different experiences and from and they were not like they are today. I know many of them, I am one of the founders of EBBF in 1990, so I, many years have passed away. I was a young CEO in those days. You don't know how much I learned from the, the people uh, attending the BBF conferences because you have people with experiences and sharing the experiences, taking care, that, taking care that nobody's judging. Everybody's trying to involve the people in the idea of unity and diversity. Unity and diversity also with different experiences, different cultures. And this is... Uh, is uh, putting the people who come to the BBF uh, meetings and conferences uh, to a new way of, of vision, how to make a good business uh, if, with the ethical behavior. One of the most important items today is how to have a, a ethical behavior. Many of the, the owners of the companies have not an ethical behavior. An ethical behavior helping the company to grow in a better way. 
um, sometimes people um, hide against ethic not not to take decision because the value founding the company is not really a value it's only the image of a value in my experience Silvia, listen, I will give you my, my email, you write me, and I will help you in finding a solution. Because this okay. is one of the most, especially in Italy, because, you know, yes. the, the, the planet has different way of making business. Italy is coming, yes. is at the queue of the of the, yeah. of the planet, due to the fact that we have uh, traditions in the past which are very difficult to cut off. Uh, the beauty of the EBBF connection happening all the time. You have been mentioning about the fact that in order to really embrace diversity, um, we need acceptance, right? And how do we achieve that acceptance is very often through understanding. You have been talking a lot about understanding and sharing. I would like to hear what is your takeaway and the importance of consultation in uh, in business and training your uh, your teams in having uh, a proper consultation. You know, this is an important item, Martina, because this is really one of the most difficult subjects to be solved in a company, because generally speaking, the people want to decide alone. A CEO wants to decide alone. He's the last, uh, he's the last uh, idea. So this, is, this type of uh, business is not working anymore. So deciding alone is, is absolutely wrong. I make you an example with my hand. We have five fingers. If we decide to open a door with one finger, we will break it. So the CEO is trying to, to, to manage a company with one finger. We need the help of the other finger in order to have a strong forces to open the door. Is a matter of knowledge. Getting diversity in the ideas is fundamental because the five fingers alone will not have the same impact of the of the of my uh, hand when the five fingers are together. So one of the one of the problem is the ego. So the ego is part of the five level, the fifth level of of, of uh, values. CEO, I'm talking about Italy. They think to be gods. Their idea is the last one and nobody can discuss about them. But if you enter in a company and you see that this, those ideas are absolutely wrong and you start talking. And with my experience, I enter in a company really slowly, slowly, if you show him that the best way is to, at the beginning, asking what the people is, is, uh, is, uh, their ideas about the subject, just to, uh, to show him that the people have ideas and slowly, slowly enter into the fact that all the decision will not be taken by him alone, by, by the team, because the force and the strength of the team is unique. And this is the, the, the fact that the planet, especially in the business community, has, under, has understood that the best way of getting a decision is to have a, a diversity of ideas. Because the diversity of ideas is bringing the solution at a high level. So you are talking about deconstructing the individual powers, right? Uh, uh, I think in, in your book, you also mentioned uh, going from a hierarchical uh, pyramid type of model to, to a daisy. Yeah. Daisy management uh, yeah. a model. I love that you always bring nature into your uh, uh, example. No, one of one of the one of the idea today is that really the pyramid is, is already dead. That doesn't work anymore because uh, the the, made, the 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 quantity of the company managed by CEO that at the end were alone have really fallen down. The best idea today is the the team. And for example, I'm totally against in a company to have a CEO. Generally, we, we call it Direttivo. Direttivo means uh, a group of people of three, five who enter the company and has the power to decide together. The CEO is part of the five. I am one of, I am from outside and I'm part of them and three people inside the company. The experience has given the result 
the, 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 uh, the decisions taken by a team are the right decisions. And of course, it's, it's a matter of ego in the, in the, in the way that the, we have to uh, convince the CEO that he does not lose his power, but he will increase his power with good decisions. And the good decisions are coming from the consultation with the people on the subject, of course, not on the company, on the subject, who are specialized in the subject. Generally, I suggest to have one outside, from outside the company, because the people are in the company are like in the box. The box is closed. They don't see outside. They don't see the future. The one who is coming outside, like me in a company, I see from outside which are the difficulties and the problem, and I'm giving my idea to open the box and to leave the people open. For example, one of the ideas is coming today is to have three CEOs with the same power, and they have to decide, at, not at majority, but uh, unanimity, three together. And, and you have mentioned a few times now during, during the talk uh, about the possibility of leaving the company, which I guess is, for many of us, has been a first reaction when we don't find uh, ourselves comfortable, right, in the, in the working environment when I live. When is the right moment to leave? Because I do believe that there must be a period of time where we do try to change the organization yeah. from inside, right? Probably we cannot change the perspective of the CEO or the, uh, the director groups, right? But sometimes just the idea that I can influence the life or the working style of my colleague just sitting next to me is... If you see the history of the business community, there was a time especially by the Japanese, that we learned that you, you, you go in a company, you die there, your son will go there, your grandson will go there. This world is closed, it's dead. Today, we, uh, uh, the, the, the situation is to move from one company after five, six years and to have new experiences in order that you share the diversity of the company with the unity of the people. So, for example, if someone is coming to my company and he said, I've been for 25 years in a company, immediately I say, thank you, you are not part, you are not the one I'm looking for. Why? What kind of experience of diversity he brings to the new company? Absolutely zero. So the, 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 moment, the moment to go is that there are two, three different uh, moments. The first one is that your values are not coincident with the value of the company. Leave it immediately. Second, as a woman, if you have disturbances inside the company, leave the company. This is especially for the women. Do not stay in a company where you have disturbances by the people of the company from the high level or any level, because this is not the company for you. The third one is to open your eyes to the business community to see if you can reach another company where you can learn something better and something else of what you have learned before. So my generally uh, suggestion, especially to the young people, after your university, send your CV, take the first one who is inviting you, then see if inside it's okay. If your passion is aligned with the company, stay there, but send curriculum continuously. I'm sending curriculum at my age because I want to see the reaction of the companies to my uh, assumption. How, can, how do I know if my competences are still valid? Third one, be in a in attitude of learning. Do not lose the attitude of learning, never. I have 77, I'm 77 years old. I'm still in attitude of learning. I was working with a company in Mantua, a digital company. I'm learning so, long, so, so much that I'm using this learn for other companies. The attitude of learning is absolutely important. A CEO who has not the attitude of learning is, like, is, is to be, to be uh, fired because it doesn't work anymore. And learning means that you improve your knowledge of new items, of new ideas, and with a better vision of the future. One of the problems we have in Italy, for example, is the fact that 67% of the business of the companies are family companies, where you have the, the, the passing of generations. 
And this is one of the problems we have to solve due to the fact that not all the generations coming after the founder are valid to, to manage the company. So we yes. have to enter into the subject in a strong way and find a solution not to burn the company, but to find a solution to the people in, inside the family. And this is one yes. of the best, in, one of the most important items in these days. And what is worst is that sometimes the entrepreneur decided that the company is the real son he never had. Yeah. And it, it, it didn't uh, allow the company to grow up because he feared that if the company grow, he lose control. In, in generally, of in these last days, we try to uh, modify the system and convince the owner to remain the owner, but giving the, the, the management giving the company to a manager inside as outside the family. This is the first one. The second one is if you have a son or a daughter, send her for 10 years abroad to, to work in another company. And when he comes or she comes back, she has the quality to manage the company. But there are different subjects. We cannot assume that it's only one problem. But the, the idea is always to divest. It's important to decide together, even if we have different ideas like the flowers of a garden. Remember simply in your ideas, the flowers of a garden. A garden is beautiful when there are different kinds of flowers. Um, but you were talking about um, moving from company to company, especially for, for younger uh, professionals. Um, I, I'm fu I fully understand that. Now, I'm a bit of... So I've been with the same company for the last 10, 11 years now. I have grown within the company. Is that... Still, would you still recommend moving out of the company just to understand more from a different industry, and from a different point, or is it okay in a sense um, to stay with the company and continue growing with the company? Actually, you, you, this is a decision you have taken by yourself. You have three so three, three possibilities. The first one is after ten years you can uh, organize your own company. This is the first one, and generally suggest to the people of your age and is. To form your company and you will have you will be an entrepreneur. Second one is to find another company. Third one is to stay in the company if the door is open. Yeah. Because if the door are not open, this is a problem. You will have it. Of course, not block. The growth mindset. The growth mindset needs to be there, right? And the absolutely yes. Okay. Absolutely yes. All right. Thank you. You know, one of the main subject is is on, on the table of all the companies of the world is that the plant is changing very fastly. And the people of the world are moving from their countries to other countries. 25, 30 years ago in Europe, we had only white and Catholic people. Today is a chaos because people from Africa, people from Asia, people from uh, Arab countries, they came with their own ideas, their own religion, and the companies enter into a big time of difficulties because uh, the CEO of the company, the general managers, where their habit was to, to, to manage the people with the same style, with the same ideas, with the same color, with the same education. And this is, is, a, is a big problem. When you, when you talk about people in a company, we used to judge the people on two main aspects, physically and uh, on their experiences. So all were white, and the experiences were different depending on the job. Now, if you enter in a company, you don't find the same condition. So we have to adjust the idea of the of the companies to a new way of uh, managing human resources. So when we talk about human resources, I am totally against this title, human resources. We are human, we are not resources. You know, because the human resources are always judged on two two main levels, especially in the last 25, 30 years. The first one, how they are physical. Someone is black, someone is white, someone is a, is a woman, someone is a man, someone is a blonde, someone is a, is a tall one, is a fat one. And generally, the way of judging in the last years were especially on, this, on the color of the skin. And, but today, if you judge the people by the color of their skin, you lose a great opportunity. The second one is to judge the people about their, their uh, qualities, their competence, their, 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 what they have in mind. And this is okay, but also in this case, the world is, is, is being, 
totally changed. So, you know, in my personal experience, we have to adjust our vision how to manage a company. And the title of Unity and Diversity is exactly the title we have to manage in these days because we have a different world. We have a different way of managing human resources. We have a different vision of the future of the world. And this is, makes a big difference, a big difference which give the company the possibility of grown up or to fall down. So we have to create special uh, courses for CEOs and general managers to try to help them in accepting the idea of unity and diversion. What does it mean, unity and diversion? I make you an example. You know, in Italy, we have a beautiful way of managing the gardens. The Italian way of managing the gardens is not to have a garden with, with only one, one, one color, the white color. We have different types of flowers, different parts and different colors. So unity and diversity means unity of the garden with the diversity of the flowers. Some of the flowers could have a bad smell or could have, a, a, let's just say, a different style, but they are part of the garden. So they exactly, the, the planet is like a garden with different colors of people, with different religions, different ideas, different parts, different competencies, a different way of living. And we have to accept the idea that we have to follow a new way of future where the planet will become a united planet with the diversity of the people. So this is one of the main subjects. I'm managing companies today with, as a consultant where we have so many differences that if you don't accept the idea of unity and diversity, giving the possibility to the people to grow up together, even with different ideas, you will not have a future because the future is in the item unity and diversity. Unity and diversity does not means only the diversity of the color of the skin, but the diversity of the ideas, the diversity of discussion, the diversity of characters, the diversity of vision, the diversity of gender, the diversity of the day, how to manage a, a, um, a group of people. So, you know, this diversity is important, especially from the ideas. One of the items I'm trying to uh, in, involve the people in a company is the, is, the, is, the concept, is the concept of how to get a decision with different ideas. Generally, you know, when we have a meeting, the people is, is uh, waiting the, the, uh, how the CEO is, uh, is, is, what the CEO is saying. In reality, we have to make vice versa. We have to increase the diversity through the diversity of manage, managing a group of, of, of people who is uh, working. I'll make you an example. I, I, this, I, I, have, I, I did it some years ago in a company. I called the CEO of the company the day before and I said, Mario, listen, tomorrow we have a meeting with all your people, with especially the, the, the high level uh, people in the company. Please, tomorrow morning before coming to the office, you go to a, to a, to a shop where they sell flowers and you buy six empty vases and six different colors of flowers and you bring it in the company. He said, Pepe, are you crazy? I said, no, no, do what, I, what I'm saying. I will come tomorrow morning, put the vases and the flowers outside the meeting room. So I arrived, I arrived in, the, in, in the company and the six people who were involved in the discussion, they were waiting me. And I said, okay, now before entering the, the, the meeting room, you can choose the flowers you like, the forms, the colors, the perfume, and get them into the meeting room. They were absolutely astonished. Beppe, what are you saying? Don't worry. What? Do what I'm saying, and we will find the solution. So each one of them got the flowers. Someone got three flowers, four flowers, white, black, red, uh, red and yellow, and so on. Then we sit down around the table, and each one has his flowers in the hand. It was so funny, so funny to see people of that level with the flowers in the hand. And I said, the project of this morning with the flowers is that we have a lady who is getting married and we have to prepare the bunch for the wedding. So we have a vote in the middle of the table 
you put your flowers with your ideas, what you love into the vault in order to prepare a bunch of flowers to send to be sent to the to the to the lady who will get married. So each one of them was putting the flowers. Someone was saying, no, this flower is not good. I take the away. So at the end, I said, everybody's okay? Yes. This is a bunch of flowers we will send to the lady who will get married. So I took the flowers in the vault and put it out from the window. So the people say, Beth, what are you doing? Now we are entering into the real discussion. We have a problem to be solved. Instead of the flowers, you have your ideas. You have your competences. You have to put into the voice your ideas to solve the problem with your own experience. So exactly as you did with the flowers, you will do, you will do with the ideas and with your competence. After an hour, the problem has a great solution. And I said, you see, this is unity in diversity. How to solve a problem with the diversity of the opinion unit put together into the same voice. So from that moment, the company in, was flying. Every decision had been taken together with the concept of unity and diversity. So we, you have mentioned at the beginning the, the physical appearance, right, and the competencies. And now we have brought, you have brought into the conversation in the organization different type of aspect, different layers of diversity. Yes, we have five. We have five levels of diversity. So you have brought the so, emotional aspect to it. No, the first well. one is the physical one. We are diverse yeah. physically, and we are unique in the world because nobody, even if you have a twin brother or sister, is not the same as you. So physically, we have our special Beppe, Daniel, Sherry, and so on. Each one of us has a physical aspect, but do not judge anybody by the physical aspect because this is a very dangerous. The second one is uh, what you have in mind, your uh, experiences, the competence, and so on. These are the two main levels where the company all around the planet today are managing their people with these two levels. But in reality, we have some other levels to be uh, to be taken into the, into the subject. The first one is the level of the emotions. Each one of us have emotions. Each one of us, even if you are a poor man or a rich man or you are... Uh, the president of the United States of America, we have emotions. The emotions have a strong effect on our minds and has, has the quality to uh, switch it off, all our ideas, depending on the level of the emotion. Any decision taken with high emotions is wrong. So what, what does it mean, emotion? I'll make you an example. If you have a son at home, and you have a problem that he has a problem with drug, your emotion in the company is, is increasing due to the fact that your idea, your mind is always with your son. I, I, I tell you a story that is part of my, of my experience that Martina knows because uh, on, on any time I'm telling the story. I had a factory in, in uh, near Florence with about 50 people and uh, the, the, uh, the head of the factory was uh, Stefano, who was an engineer or a very, very good engineer. But one day my secretary tells me, Beppe, you know, Stefano has a problem because the whole day he's running inside the factory with a cell phone, talking the whole day, we don't know with whom. So I called, Steph I, I called my secretary and I said, let's, let's try to be a 007 to understand what is the problem with Stefano. So my secretary, Carmen, she went on and she told me one day that Stefano has a wife in the hospital because with the third boy, with the third one who born a few weeks ago, they have some problem. Where do you think Stefano has had his mind during this time? He was in the factory with his body, but his emotions were putting him in the hospital. So I called Stefano one Monday morning and I said, Stefano, from today, you will, you will uh, be excused. You will go to the hospital and you will stay there until the problem will not be solved. He said, no, Mr. Obiati, I'm okay. I said, Stefano, listen, I will fight you. If you don't go to the hospital, you will be paid exactly as before, but stay with your wife and your family because this is a priority in your life, okay? Is it clear? He said, it's clear. One month has gone. One day, the secretary, my secretary, Carmen, in Milano, so Milano, is 300 kilometers from Florence. She said, 
the wife of Stefano is in the office. She wants to meet you. I said, the wife of Stefano he said, yes, she wants to meet you. So she, she, I told her, come in. So she came in and she was crying. And she said, Mr. Robiati, I want to thank you because without Stefano, in those days, we could not solve the problem. So I came here to thank you so much and I also brought some cakes for you. So you see, this is the way that Stefano was, uh, was, uh, was protected by the company in solving the problem that he had in those days. And you can see the emotions of Stefano went down because he was capable to find a solution for himself. Now, you know how many times we have people working in the company, they have a problem with the wife, they probably have a problem with the partner, they have a problem with the, with the, I don't know, with the teeth, they don't have money to, to take care of themselves. So the emotions are going up and down like, like a bell of a, of a ring. You see, it continues ringing. And the, during, at, at night, the St. Peter uh, bells are, are playing continuously. So we have to give possibility to, pe to the people to solve their problem, taking care of their emotions. This is the, th the third one. Then we have the fourth. The fourth level is the, fourth, the, the, the level of the will. You know, will is an important item for ourselves. The will is the, is the item which gives us the possibility to reach the point, to reach the goal, to find the solution, to, 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 uh, to, be, to become over with the exam, to, be, to become over with, with something I had to find a solution. So will is an important item. But how many times we have, we have uh, let us say, asked ourselves, how can we help the will of the people working for us? Because, you know, in this four level, the physical, the uh, competencies, uh, the uh, level of emotions, we have to feed them. In a good company, the CEO or the, the person who manages the human resources have the responsibility to feed these levels. For example, in a company, we have to take care of the physical level of the people, giving a good offices, light, fresh air, even for some companies, a gym in order they can really help themselves or have a course on what to eat for, for having a good, a good health. This is the first one we can feed, giving possibility to the people to take their uh, decisions about their own physical. The second one is the competency. Give them the possibility to have new knowledge through campaign, through giving, sending, sending them outside, to have courses in order that they can learn more. This is the second. The third one, emotion. How do we feed the emotions? The emotions can be fitted with sharing the emotions and leaving the people in sharing their emotions. About the will, the important item, we have to feed the will with a new word that we don't use, never. We have never used, We even in the family, we never use the, the, the word I, I will say now in a minute, how to feed the will. Encouragement. How many times you have been encouraged by your parents, by your friends, by the, by the owner of your company, by the CEO, by the ones who will manage human resources? Never. Never you have been encouraged to go on with your ideas, with your project, to reach your point. This is the fourth. Then we have the last one with the five. The, the five is the inner qualities. The inner qualities are the value. What kind of value do we share into the company? I make you an example of many years ago, I, I was managing a multinational company, and in the 90s, we had to, to manage a new CFO for chief financial officer. And because the company was growing up and with a new one was needed. So we went, in those days, LinkedIn was not working. So we went through a hunting uh, company and we found 800 people who wanted to, to get the, 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 the chair. So at the end, after eight months, two people have been uh, chosen by the, by the company. And they told me, Mr. Robiati, the last word is your word. I said, okay, send one tomorrow and one after tomorrow. So the first one came, he has a CV, was fantastic. He was um, very, very competent in, in, uh, in, in every financial field, in administration, in funding funds uh, with, a, with a 
office of uh, income taxes office and so on. And I said, listen, you have a fantastic CV and also you have asked a fantastic wage, very high level wage. And also you had you asked for a car, a BMW 530. This was a very, very detailed request. I said, yes, I will give you everything you have asked if you answer to me only one question. And uh, if you answer the question in the way that I want, you will have everything. If not, you will, you, you, this is not your place. And he told me, very, very, very uh, intelligent guy, how do I know your answer? He said, I said, it's okay. You're right. I take a paper. I write my answer. I put it here. And if you answer, if you, after you answer, I will show you my answer. If the two are, are together, you are you are you are the one who got the place. And I told him, you know, it's 25 years that I'm managing this company as a CEO, and I'm really tired to feel bags of money to spend my Saturday night, my Sunday, in the public toilet, in the cinemas, everywhere, everywhere on the highway, to give money to the politicians under the under the under the table to get the contracts. I don't want to do it anymore. Are you able to do it for me? He was watching me and I said, me, take your time. And after a while he said, I generally don't use, but in this case, I will do it for you. And I said, this is the paper. I'm sorry. We never paid one penny under the table because it have value. So I'm so sorry you are not good for this place. The other one came tomorrow, the day after, this is uh, he, he was working for me for many years. As soon as as, as uh, I enter into the discussion, he said, "No, I'm not interested in this company because I don't go against my values." I said, "Mr. Dumbo, you are inside, and you have also the car, five three zero BMW, as you have us." You know, from him, I got a great experience due to the fact that one day. On Saturday morning, we were going to Sardinia, to the to the mountains, to to uh, to ski together, at the, with the with the BMW of the company. At the entrance of the highway to Torino to go to the high uh, to the to the mountains, he didn't pass through the to the automatic uh, door. He went to take a ticket, and I said, "Rambo, why do you take the ticket?" He said, "Mr. Obiati, I am really shocked." We are going to ski on a personal basis and we cannot use the money of the company to pay the highway. For 20 years, I was going to Cervinia, passing through the automatic door without thinking about the money of the company. You see what a kind of lesson this is coming from the value. So when you, the values are fundamental in a company, how do you, uh, do you assume a marketing manager if you don't know if he is trust, trust for, he has not the quality of trustfulness. He is not honest. He is not, I mean, you know, all these qualities are part of the value of the company. So five levels, physically, uh, um, competencies, emotionally, willing, and, and, and values. Now, just to make an example, we can imagine a, a, a tree. We have the roots are the value. Then we have the willing, the capacity of the, of the seed to come out from the ground. The trunk are the emotion. The, and the rest, uh, we have the branches are the competencies. And at the end, the fruit is the sweet but physically item that we will uh, be pleased at the end of the process. If we don't have roots in a, in a, in a tree, we don't have growth. So we have to go back to our uh, five levels, and any time in a company, try to manage the people with these five levels, giving the, the possibility to the people to adjust their own way in order to go together to the end of the process. So those five levels needs to be constantly harmonized in order to uh, achieve this diversity that we are talking about? At the beginning, it is different. This is depending on the level of knowledge of the CEO because everything depends on the CEO. The CEO is uh, have to show his leadership. Leadership is a way of to be 
is in, in the simplification of his attitude. The CEO is the first one that should apply the five levels. And then, and then the people is watching the CEO and slowly, slowly, with, of course, with uh, uh, courses inside the company, courses outside the company. For example, one of the subjects today is, just, is sustain, the subject of sustainability. Sustainability of what? Sustainability of the planet, sustainability of the climate, sustainability of the financial system, sustainability of the company, sustainability of the people. So you see at a different level and you have to work slowly, slowly. Of course, we consult. I am a consultant of many companies working on this subject, helping the CEOs to, uh, to acquire this information and slowly, slowly change their attitude against the business community.